This is Gordon Bowden live on air on the 26th of May 2014, 12.43pm. Carry on Gordon. Okay. When, when I refer to you forensic documents, it means those documents held in government um, appointed uh, buildings like uh, directors uh, uh, check for company's house. So by referring to those official documents, you then get an accurate portrayal of the director's history in past companies and or interlocking companies which they then use to uh, formulate money laundering operations to asset strip the parental company now I will refer to but I can't really cite them because no. I don't have access to them and, and let, uh, that's like a veiled threat that I'm going to disclose something but I don't have it within my power to disclose it no, I, look I understand I'm, I'm giving you an overview if you refer to the implications as underpinned by, shall I call him M, and by M you know exactly who I mean. Malky. No. <laughs> Ma Michael. Oh, oh, sorry, okay, yeah, yeah got okay. it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're slow at this. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's get back to... Uh, but remember that you are on air now. I, I fully understand that. But other than giving him his first name. Yeah, 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 that's good. Okay. When people look at the arms to Iraq files and the involvement of Astra, which is Astra Holdings PLC, yeah. there were inferences that certain directors of that company uh, were uh, brought before the DTI and that would be Margaret Beckett of Derby, why I have a personal interest in all this. Yeah. Uh, where Margaret Beckett... For the listener's attention, uh, Gordon is a citizen of Derby and his, his MP is Chris Williamson for Derby North, but Margaret Beckett is the MP for Derby South, is that correct? Correct. Good. And in the, in the time of the Astra scandal involving... Uh, the supergun, the Iraq supergun, the Matrix Churchill trial, uh, and Astra Holdings, which was then uh, uh, infiltrated by a su uh, supposedly MI6 agent, which was Stefan Koch, and that is Stefan Adolphus Koch, is his true name. Michael M. Uh, appears to believe that uh, the, one of the directors of Astra Holdings was uh, Gerald James, which is totally inaccurate. And I've tried to uh, correct Michael. Yeah, just, just keep um, the conversation, I think, if well, you can. Yeah, but it, it shouldn't have no reflection on who this is, but it's forensically accurate in his documents. Um, but there was reference that uh, directors of Astra were called before Margaret Beckett to explain their circumstances, involvement of... Uh, so Margaret Beckett chaired that? The, she was one of the DTI uh, senior officers who interviewed the directors of Astra. And was that under the all-seeing eye of Chilcot? Yes. Was, so Chilcot... Yeah, well, no, so that would have been... Uh, um, uh, just Cook. Okay. So that we this was just an internal back. DTI inquiry or Yes, as to the as to the involvement of Astra Holdings directors in this covert arms trading and the building of the supergun which was involved the Matrix Churchill uh, inquiry. However, if people take forensic documents and that is uh, the company's registration and review the directors of those companies. There is a, uh, uh, certain aspects of what has been portrayed by Gerald James and others as to the formation of Astra Holdings. Now, Astra Holdings PLC 
which is obviously a delisted company at the moment. The only directors listed in Company's House were Stephen Adolph Cock, Dr. John Ernest Pike, Anthony Joseph McCain, Peter William Collins, Raymond Arthur Smith. Oh, you're going too fast. Uh, John, John Ernest Pike. Yes. S keep going. Anthony Joseph McCann. That's Mike. Uh, Charlie. Charlie. Alpha. November. November. Yeah, good. And Peter William Collins. Yeah. Raymond Arthur Smith. Uh huh. Richard William White. This is all in your head. No. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> file. One of my files. Okay. Which I tried to put M right with. It. Ma I I mustn't snigger when I listen to it again. It makes it sound yeah. ever so flippant. It's yeah, a well, Richard William White. Yeah. That's the end of the list. No. Roy Barber. So in and about. 1991 to 1992, when Astra Holdings PLC was formed, the l most of those directors, actually all of them bar one, were then resigned from Astra Holdings PLC, and it left one person in an active position up until, which is looking at the list, which is still active, till 2014. And that was Stefan Adolf Koch. Okay. From the official documents. Do you get, my, do you get me? Uh, Stefan Koch is now dead. Is he died in Oban last year? Is that correct? Well, who, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Because so that was a, an official news story that we have no way of knowing whether it's no, accurate. Of course not. But when you check the companies of these individuals of that. Uh, Astra Holdings PLC those that have uh, multiple companies would be Mr. Uh, Anthony Joseph McCann who has 48 company affiliations Peter William Collins has 21 company affiliations and Mr. Roy Barber has 98 company affiliations. Now, Mr. Stephen Adolf Koch has the two, and this is where the intrigue runs into a company called Springfield Road Limited. Have you got that? S Springfield. I must not get excited. That's Homer no, Simpson's okay. home. Road Limited. Yeah. The company number, for anyone to get further reference, is 00 And within that, you can see the company directors include Dr. Ernest Pike, John Ernest Pike, that is. Yep. Anthony Joseph McCain. And these are at the same time as those listed holding. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is all roughly about 1991. So that's that's overlapping directorships, and that's a breach yes. of which law? No, no, it's not a breach of any law. They're allowed to be directors of anything, and as many directorships as they want. Right. I'm saying that. What what I'm trying to show you is that uh, it can be shown that when you look at the other directors, the directors that never were uh, investigated in that period of time, to look at the people involved, the one that stands out uh, to me were Major General Donald Edward Isles, I-S-E-L-E-S, -E -E yeah. who I believe was the recruiter of Miss Andrea Davison. And he, he is an intel person as well as being a military well, well, person? Well, well, obviously, because now you're looking with um, 
Stefan Adolf Koch, who was from Midlands Bank, he was their arms procurement officer for Midlands Bank, and was an MI6 plant into Astra Holdings. And when was the Midlands Bank crashed, and with which other banks was that well, associated? I, I can't give you that reference until it's in front of me. Okay. And then I have to go back to my library. But um, uh, M definitely knows Christopher William Gumley, and there you see now within the directorships, Mr. Gerald. Reevely James, who is Gerald James. Yeah. So he wasn't listed in the directorships of Astra Holdings. He was listed as a director of Springfield Road Limited. Do you get what I'm trying to tell you? So that's is one of two of Stephen Cox companies okay. through yeah. that time period. Yes. And but so you're telling me it, but it does not ring bells of significance in my simple head. Well, what I'm trying to say to you is that when people launch companies and shell companies purely to um, hide the fact or disguise the fact that they are becoming conduits for uh, weapons trading, but there was never any proof. Well, if you research the directors and follow their directorships, the ones I've just told you about, you end up... Um, throughout that list uh, of Springfield Road Limited to people who were directors of BAE Systems. Ah, that one That's I've heard that. about. Pardon? <laughs> that one I know all about. Well, you do, and so do I. Is that this gentleman, his name is Nigel Peter Tinsley Nigel Peter Tinsley That's uh, Tango India November Sierra Lima Echo Yankee Yeah um, You can check this uh, Do you want his ID number? No Anyway with him being uh, a co-director which is directly interlocked with those from Springfield Road Limited you can see he was a director of BM Pension Trustees Limited yeah that's just BM Pension Trustees Limited and he links uh, as being a director of BAE Systems uh, with that's Nigel uh, Peter Tinsley BM uh, Pensions and that interlocks then with Dr. John Ernest Pike Major General Donald Ernest Isles do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah. Is that when, when you have common directors of companies who can be seen to be at that time interlocked as directors of BAE Systems who were a weapons production company who then utilized a shell company being Astra Holdings and that's what Gerald James says in his book is that they used his company as a uh, shell to launder a uh, vast amount of uh, military hardware to Iran and Iraq and use them as a scapegoat. And and in either the DTI inquest or in the Chilcot inquiry, the, none of these matters were brought forth. No, no, of course not. Because if you did that, BAE Systems, which is the major manufacturing of, of military uh, paraphernalia, uh, would have been brought before the courts, much the same as. Uh, they were uh, interlocked with the Al Yamama scandal, which involved Jonathan Aitken and Sir Mark Thatcher. Yeah, just a minute, because I've got images of Jonathan Aitken and Mark Thatcher with Mrs. Thatcher and the Kalashnikovs that you told me yeah, about. That's, that's right. And the links to the Murdoch system. 
uh, the links to malaria no more the links to Kevin Cahill the yeah. advisor to a variety of British Prime Ministers exactly oh, it's, it's like a, um, a a total totally different uh, empire of business but mainly conducted by very senior politicians and their uh, um, their shonky uh, VIPs that they associate with, all all acting as a, as a separate entity from a government we know them to be involved in uh, protecting this country and its interests. They have created this this uh, web of deceit, but it, uh, it, but it's a business. And when M talks to us, does he yes. tell us about the Thatcher inquest, which was opened but never ever published? as far as I'm aware? Well, M is under the impression that uh, Gerald James's uh, book, which I have read in the public interest, uh, overviews Gerald James's uh, suspicions of MI6 infiltrating Astra uh, purely to use it as a laundering shell for getting munitions covertly to Iran and Iraq through Jordan and Israel. And to do that, you need a whole semblance of uh, corporates as uh, shells because you're talking vast amount of money. And you, it would show up on BAE Systems books if you had an independent auditor who would overview where they were getting their money from and which companies it was being transferred through. And hence, when you look at a lot of these oil, gas and mining companies that I've told you about, like ENI, which is E-N-I, you will see it's got hundreds of subsidiaries. And by doing so, you can move money from one parental company to a subsidiary. And then when the parental company is uh, uh, invoiced for tax declaration, it has nothing in there. Do you okay, see what yeah, I see it. So, yeah. so, so they then have a, a tax declaration where they owe the government and the country nothing because there's no money in there. And then they will claim a tax deduction on the loss because they've been moving money out of the parental company. And roughly, how many, how many of those Ponzi shells did they have to choose from to get, you know, the cash laundered somewhere else? What, in, in Astro Holdings? In, in the organisation that we're talking about here that are appended to BAE Systems and the... Oh, thousands. Thousands for yeah. that syndicate alone. Yeah, thousands, which includes Shell, BP, all these uh, uh, have common directors who are directors of uh, BAE Systems and BP, Shell... They, they, they have Could you just direction. run through some household names in the political community? Oh, in, in what respect? In, in terms of that syndicate? In for BAE systems or the total network? Yeah, the total network. So well, BP, B, Shell. Well, no, if I, if I refer to the biggest scam that's currently ongoing in the Falklands, uh, which sacrificed many of my my family being uh, the British military, especially from Wales, uh, when uh, the Sir Galahad got hit and my car came back from Cyprus on the Sir Galahad, um, when they lost a lot of the Welsh regiment on... Um, you've uh, never told me about this, but it's, well, um, anyway, it's that's, just that's, uh, uh, really sad. So can I stop making that video now? You've brought that to... Uh, quite a climactic conclusion showing how far up government and f how far up the munitions system this scandal goes. Can I now stop that video and we'll restart on the issue of the murder of Mrs. Ar Arridge? So I'm just, just yes, take, okay. take me 30 okay. seconds to do that.